All right, guys, you want to learn how to make this? Then follow along. All right, so I have a clip of a woman doing yoga on a beach, and I'm going to rotoscope her out and create a silhouette logo animation. So let's start by hitting Option W and grabbing the rotor brush and change our brush size to start at the fingers. As I draw the green on the fingers, you'll see the pink overlay starting to show what I'm rotoscoping. If I hold Option, the brush stroke will turn red and I can remove unwanted parts of my roto. So I'll go down the arm here and through the rest of the body, trying to be as precise as possible, as this is critical to tell the software what's good to roto and what's not. I could change my view to the red overlay to get a different view of my roto. As I see here, there's a bit of gray sky on the edge here that I want to remove. See parts of her finger here that I need to add back in. In between the fingers, yeah, I'm not as worried about as the refine edge tool will actually fix that. Sometimes the algorithm fights you a bit, like here the fingers went right back out. So I'll just add it back in. And I'll skip ahead here and see how it looks. Now right here, you could see there's a gap in her body that isn't red, so I'm gonna fix that. And here it's fighting me a bit again, but I'm just gonna keep working it. I can see already that the corners here are gonna give me some problems, but I'll work it as best I can and I can add the refine edge later on. Now I'll see my roto with my alpha channel. It looks pretty good. Before we continue, if you're finding this video helpful, then hit that like button so we can spread to more post-production people like you. So next I'll go up to my rotor brush tool and I'll change it to the refine edge tool or I could just hit option W to switch it. It'll be blue instead of green and I'll just color in my edges that I wanna soften a bit and the edges and corners that were giving me issues when using my rotor brush. I found this works well for hair and small gaps like in between fingers or whatnot. So I'll keep moving forward. And right here we see we lost her foot. So if I switch my view, the refine edge tool is getting a little confused. I'll hold option while still using the refine edge tool and it'll turn to a black and I'll remove my refine edge here. I'll switch back to my rotor brush and I'll remove this rock here. Much better. Skipping ahead. Looking good so far. So I lost part of her arm here. I'll add that back in with the roto brush. Okay, so now when I'm happy with my roto, I'll hit the freeze button to lock it in. And once that's done, I'll actually pre-render out my clip as an MOV with alpha channel so my computer doesn't blow up. So as you can see here, I have my rendered clip in a new sequence with a background color. Now I'll add my fill effect to my subject, change my color. Next, I'll add a bevel and embossed effect to it. I'll fine tune the bevel and emboss parameters a bit by going into the effects in my timeline panel. Now I'll add my logo animation that I pre-made prior to this. Move that into the top left of my frame. Now to take it one step further, I'll add texture to my comp. Now, this is just a stock image of a sand texture. I'll add it to my comp and I'll hide the layer. Now I'll add texturize effect to my background layer. And in my effect controls, I'll change the texture layer to the sand pattern layer. I'll add a drop shadow to my animation and I'll tweak that a little bit. 
And here it is, guys. With a little know-how and some creativity, you could use rotoscoping to your advantage in your animations and take your content to the next level. Thanks for watching. Hope this video helps your videos in the future. See you next time.